You know, folks, ZD here. When I saw Tornado of Elemental Turbulence in the reveal trailers, I knew what I was playing for League Start. And when I saw that the numbers were actually pretty decent on it as well, then I was all the more enthused. This skill looks and is super comfortable and very fun to play. It allows you to summon three tornadoes of random elements, fire, cold, or lightning, each time you cast it. And those can stack on a single target, so they each hit about four times per second, which means 12 hits per second when they're all stacked up, which is not a bad number-wise, especially when it's a skill that has just about every gem tag in the game, so you can scale levels with it very easily, and it's base physical damage, which means you can scale it in many other different ways, like adding fire damage with Herald of Ash, or using Hatred, using added chaos damage scaling, some people are even going poison on it. Really, there are so many different ways to play this, I think, very fun skill. When I did my different budget tierings for my Ark build last league, you folks seemed to really enjoy that, so I thought I'd do, maybe do the same thing again here, at least kicking things off with a look at Tornado of Elemental Turbulence on an Inquisitor in under one Divine. Now, thanks to some nice currency making, I've had more than one Divine, so I've been able to do things like upgrade to a six link, but all the footage here will be shown on a four link to show you what it looks like for well under one Divine, in fact. I really wanted a very comfortable and smooth feeling to play League Starter character this league, something that I could just mm, feel like buttery smooth as, as I was playing. And when I think of that, I think of builds with really high recovery. So for me, that's things like Trickster, it can be Pathfinder, and it can also be things like Inquisitor, one of my top favorites in that regard. The ability to get and stack a ton of regen that applies to both your health and energy shield makes for very, very comfortable gameplay. Even more comfortable than that is never having to worry about things like mana, blood magic. Like I was saying, there's so many different ways to scale Tornado and so many different characters and ascendancies you could play with this build. But I opted for Inquisitor because I knew that it was going to have decent damage scaling, a very comfortable playstyle, and give me lots of different options to uh, different directions to take the skill in long term. And as a backup plan always, if you're playing an Inquisitor, it's very easy to pivot to almost any other build. Playstyle wise, things are very simple. You simply run along and drop your tornadoes in front of you and they go off and do all the work. The tornado AI is very aggressive and they will hunt down mobs until they exist no longer, including around corners and through doorways and things like that. The only thing they can't do is go down a ledge. If there's any real downside to the skill, it's probably that. But other minor things to be aware of is that this is a skill that cannot scale with car speed. It has a limit of three tornadoes. Now, 12 hits per second is nothing to sneeze at, but it means that eventually you will hit a ceiling where you might start to think, it'd be sure nice if I could scale with car speed to get things even higher. So I don't think that's too big a deal, personally. I think you're reaching a very good point without that car speed scaling here, especially as the numbers and scalability of the gem in other areas is so damn good. You'll notice that I only have fire tornadoes. Normally it can spawn lightning and cold ones as well, and it does so randomly. That is thanks to these combat focus jewels that allow you to block a certain element from spawning. These can be made through a vendor recipe with a 20 quality uh, prismatic gem, so something like Elemental Hit, for example, works for this, and two rings. So, for example, this one would require a ruby and a sapphire ring in order to make the Viridian combat focus to block lightning. So we use the one that blocks lightning and the one that blocks cold over here, and that makes it so that we only do fire. And the reason we do that is so that we can scale off of things like Herald of Ash and added fire damage a bit more efficiently, and also benefit fully from things like fire nodes without sometimes doing cold damage instead. Obviously that would just be suboptimal. The other really key thing is here that Replica Cold Iron Point is a very good damage scaler for this setup, as it gives you plus three gems, thanks to the fact that Tornado has basically every gem tag possible, it's very easy to scale with plus levels like that. Downside being do no cold damage, but if we block the cold variant from even spawning, that is a non-issue. Like I said, there's a ton of different ways you could go with this, so alternatively, you could not use something like this and use a different style of weapon. You could go Battle Mage, or you could even go Hatred Scaling, for example, would be very good on this skill as well. So really so many options. This is just one of a plethora of choices you have for this skill, and one that's working very well for me so far. Now I'll have my current path of building as of this point set up for the 4-link active only, 
And as you can see, that's putting us at about 2 million DPS, which is really not that bad for this point. It certainly feels very solid with the tiers of maps that I'm up to as I push through the high yellows and hopefully soon into the reds. I see no issue with pushing all the way through red tier maps and filling out my atlas with this setup on a four link even, but obviously I have a six link so it's going to be even smoother than that. One note I do want to make is that I went into this build with literally zero plan, so the tree I am 100% making up as I go, so I reserve the right to completely change this. If I do a follow-up video with a higher budget version, the tree might look completely different. So just be aware of that, and I'm sorry if it ends up costing you some regrets if you decide to follow along. But the tree is working quite well for now. It's just had zero forethought put into it, and very much as just like, mm, I feel like I need a bit of this. Mm, I feel like I need a bit of that. And uh, it's working very well, even in that regard. Before I go over that though, I'll just give you a little bit of a look at the gear and also an idea of the budget and how it comes in under one divine. So the helm is Malachi's Simula, a one chaos item. However, as it is so common, it's very easy to get good corruptions on it. And even plus one power charges, which probably should be the most expensive, is only about 10, 20 chaos, depending. As you can see, there's one up there that's been up there for three hours right now. For 10 chaos, there's just not much competition. Now, if a bunch of people decide to buy these all of a sudden and there's not many left, the good news is that there's a bunch of other good corruptions like regen, energy shield, life, things like that, that you can get for 5C or cheaper. The reason we use Malachi's Simula is not only does it give 20% chance for double damage, so that's just take all of your total damage and add 20% more at the end, but also it gives us blood magic without us having to go get that on the tree. And that's pretty important when paired with Infernal Mantle. Infernal Mantle gives you plus three level to fire gems, so very nice for that tornado scaling. It scales very well with gem levels, both in terms of damage, but it also gains movement speed, making the skill feel and look and clear a lot better. Other than that, it's got a decent amount of energy shield, and it's got the drawback of a, ma a massive amount of increased spell damage taken on low mana. So normally if you reserve any auras really, you will be on low mana. So Infernal Mantle is kind of a non-starter in those situations. However here with Blood Magic completely bypasses that issue, having zero out of zero mana actually counts as being full all of the time instead. So we don't have any downside there. These are, these are one chaos unlinked. As they're relatively common and cheap, they're a pretty good target for corruption farming as well, and if you can get yourself some nice double corruptions or even single corruptions for extra gem levels, then that's going to be very, very neat as well. And that allows you the option of using tainted fusings to try and get your six link too. That is probably the route I would have went if I hadn't got myself into a six link a little bit earlier on by taking advantage of some uh, potentially temporarily cheap beasts. There's a new beast craft that allows you to six link items. I mentioned before, Replica Cult Iron Point, these guys come in at under 10 chaos, currently 8C. When you're low life like this, you can take advantage of some extremely good budget items for League starting. One of those is Laurie's Lantern. This one is 1 chaos, has 20 all rares and 25 chaos rares, and enemies hitting you is unlucky with their damage, meaning uh, that's it's something like a 7 to 17 percent reduction in damage taken. I don't know the exact math on that, but it's a pretty nice mitigative layer for hit damage. Another 1C item is Duresso's Courage, this shield just here, which also has 30 res, a bunch of spell block when you're on low life, and if you hit, get hit by attack and then a spell, you basically have 100, like, full block chance. Not 100, but you block caps. When you're clearing and playing in regular mapping content, you're constantly getting hit by random projectiles and spells and things like that, so you usually have one or the other of those blocks maxed out with this, which is just so nice for a 1 Chaos item. Now originally with my auras I planned on running Discipline, but my chat reminded me of Corrupted Soul Keystone and Replica Soul Tether. Corrupted Soul gives you 15% of maximum life as extra energy shield, and the belt does the same thing on top of that. The other thing is, which is quote unquote a downside but kind of an upside here, is 50% of non-chaos damage bypasses your energy shield. What this actually does on an Inquisitor is makes it so that your massive amount of life and energy shield regen that you have, so currently just sitting here I, I waver between 900 and 1600, more if my enduring cry is going off, that is effectively doubled for incoming damage, right? So as damage comes in and hits me, it gets split between my energy shield and life, and both of the regens apply to recover from that damage. So that is a huge amount of regen, right? 2000 plus regen most of the time. Replica Soul Tether is pretty cheap and common, relatively speaking, for a replica item, so it comes in around 9 chaos right now. The amulet was simply 
life and chaos with a little bit of resistances so quite often if you search for a small amount of chaos like 18 or 20 chaos you'll come up with unveiled amulets like this which are generally pretty cheap so that cost me five chaos plus a three chaos craft to add a little bit more to it as we are kind of this hybrid low life setup we do want to make sure that we get a decent chunk of chaos resistance i so far haven't died to chaos damage or really even come close more than maybe once when i had really low chaos like in the negatives but as you get more and more chaos it actually feels very comfortable the reason for that is is a lot of chaos damage is damage over time and we have a ton of regen so that stuff is not much of a concern and for the hit damage we have petrified blood which staggers the incoming damage on our lives so while 2k life unreserved here might look a little iffy it is really much more than it seems but that said make sure you get some chaos resistance where you can i'm currently moving into high yellows and sitting at 30 percent chaos res which has been very comfortable so far other than that, I just have generic life resist gloves here. I'll just slap, say, two chaos for those things. There I go. If I price check, one to two chaos. And the ring here is uh, actually a pretty cheap one to get as well. This is just effectively life and resist with this chance to gain a frenzy charge on kill unveiled mod, which is super common. So these guys end up being very cheap to buy. Here's a search which I can include in the description below for rings like this with uh, the Frenzy Charge, which is quite nice because it gives you damage scaling, but also a little bit of speed. Now, we don't really benefit DPS-wise from cast speed, but it still makes the build feel a lot better to play. A very small downside of the skill is that the base cast time on it is a little bit long, so having a little bit of speed, like running a Silver Flask instead of a Quicksilver or something, for example, just makes it feel a little bit nicer to play. Makes it a little quicker to drop those down while running without it interrupting you too much. The extra frenzy charge and the frenzy charges you generate while killing uh, make that feel a bit nicer. Now the boots are a slot where I spent up a bit because I wanted to squeeze out some more chaos rares and still get a decent little chunk of movement speed and life. So those alone are only about 5 chaos. If I come here and disable this life regeneration rate mod, which is a little bit rarer, you'll see that there's actually a pair there with 25 movement speed. So if you're a little bit, have a little bit of wiggle room there, they're a fair bit cheaper. But even if you go up to 30% movement speed, they don't get too much more expensive than that anyway. There's a 30 pair for 5C, for example. But I did have a little bit of extra budget in that divine to spend, so I dropped it on some life regeneration rate. This modifier actually scales your regen by quite a lot because we have so much base regen. This is a more multiplier for that. So this is 17% more total life and energy shield regen. So it's a really good mod. Now, as you can see, sometimes you can actually pick up some real bargains here. So there's actually some for 5 and 10C now that I just searched for this. But nonetheless, just to ensure against the fact that that's a kind of a rarer modifier combo there, I put them in at 2040C and estimated 40 if you look for 30 move speed. So I really went for the high estimate here. If you do pick up some for cheaper like we just saw on the trade site, then you can get this way down. I'll show you that regen difference there. So we are at 537 without that modifier and with that modifier it jumps up to 658 there. That's with Vitality off though, so it's more because it's actually scaling the Vitality. You can see the 900 there with the Vitality on. That's a level 19 Vitality, it'll get even better than that. The Combat Focus Jewels are just about a couple Chaos each because you need to buy 20 Quality Gems. You can search Elemental Hit, but you can also do any other Prismatic Gem. And the Rings are just like a couple Alks from the Vendors. The Gem itself cost me 2 Chaos, they're probably cheaper than that right now. I have just qualityed it from the quality from Labyrinths as I've been running them, as well as a few GCPs here and there. So all up with high estimates on some of these items, that's 95 Chaos with Divines currently at 110C, well under budget, which gives you a few extra Chaos to play around to full link your gear, grab some basic flasks, I'm actually just using ones I found while leveling, including still like just a little hallowed flask here with no quality. <laughs> I've had pretty much just got that for corrupting blood removal. I barely ever actually need a flask on this build. All in all, the performance to price ratio here is really good. I don't think this is going to be as cracked as Ark was for single target. Like, that skill was insane, but I have been deleting bosses so far. This does at least remind me a little bit of Ark in the sense that it's got that real good price to performance ratio going on here. I will say, though, compared to that build, this is much simpler to play. That one needed some skills developed with Hydrosphere placement. Obviously that skill has been deleted from the game basically since they made it so that the surging doesn't uh, split to the same target anymore. But this one is much smoother to play with just the running around and dropping the tornadoes. 
You'll probably have noticed I'm running Void Sphere of Rending. It's not something I really use too much. I've just got it linked to Culling Strike and it kind of sucks in mobs a little bit so you can have that stack your tornadoes a bit more easily, but it's not really too big a thing. It does have base physical damage, so you can scale that. If you're doing hatred scaling or something like that, it would actually work pretty well, I think. But you can also just as easily link Culling Strike to like Frost Blink or something, for example, instead. With automation for Enduring Cry using the new Call to Arms gem, you can have that auto cast and basically just make it so that Arcanist Brand does Wave of Conviction and Flammability for you. Then basically you have a two button build, right? Like, like two buttons total. So you just run around casting tornadoes and blinking. And then only really for bosses do you ever need to do Arcanist Brand after you've got three tornadoes. Your priority is always to get three tornadoes down, let them go, and then cast your Arcanist Brand and then go back to refreshing your tornadoes and moving around. Very comfy playstyle. That lasts about four seconds. So there's pretty much just enough time to cast those. Drop your brand, maneuver, and then cast them again after a breath. Definitely in love with this build so far. So I thought I'd give you an early snapshot at a very cheap version of it and just how well it's going on that budget. Just very quickly, directionality for the tree. Come through here, grab these things, come up and grab elemental overload initially. You'll drop that once you get like the crit nodes from Inquisitor basically. But until then that just gives you a very nice source of damage. Another really key one is the mastery here. 100% increased damage with hits against ignited enemies. Because we inherently just get some ignite chance from here and tornado hits so often, enemies will always be ignited and you just get that 100% damage. It's ridiculously efficient. And that combined with elemental overload, basically deleted bosses and basically everything through the campaign. Very comfortable. I couldn't even tell that the league mechanic was making the game harder because like it barely felt like it with that much damage. For leveling, I use the standard package of magma orb, flame wall, Holy Flame Totem. But if you hate Magma Orb, feel free to use any other skills. Freeze Pulse would work just fine. At level 12, I think about Merveil, you can also swap into Blazing Salvo, which is a very chunky skill that's very satisfying. I ran that with Flame Wall basically until level 32 when I purchased and equipped a Tornado of Turbulence and then cruised from then on. You can swap into Replica Cold Iron Point, Malachi Simula, and Infernal Mantle pretty early. I think Infernal Mantle's requirement is probably the highest of those, around like level 60. So around then, you can swap into that combo and get that going and pick up Alori's Lantern and Duresso's Courage and all that um, pretty early on and swap over that right away. So don't feel like you have to wait to do the like low life setup. It works right from the get go. The other thing you want to make sure that you have is the life reservation efficiency of skills here. That just allows you to make sure you can level up your Vitality Gem and still stay uh, as close to 50%. That's basically what you want to do is you want to stay as close to 50%. So you want to be low life, but not really like too much lower because the more you unreserved you have left over, the more health you have, right? The more tank you are. So with this setup right now, I'm at 46% unreserved life. So if you could get that to 49, then sweet, but it's not really a big deal. Surge of Vigor and Recovery Mastery here give a ton of extra regen, so that's very comfy. That's the one. That's what makes it fluctuate and gives me a ton of extra regen. I've also taken the Recoup nodes from over here, but I'm undetermined on how much this is necessary with the amount of regen that we have. Recoup is very nice paired with Petrified Blood, but it might not really be necessary. Don't forget to pick up Pain Attunement when you do go low life. Like I said, the tree is very much winging it, so I reserve the right to completely change it to something more effective in the future for later variants of the build. But for now, this has worked very, very well. Anyway, folks, I think that just about covers it. If you have any questions about the build, or maybe you're playing things in a different way and have discovered some cool item interactions or combos or scaling methods for it, or maybe have some ideas for the tree, let me know in the comments. That's it for now, though. I'm Ziggy D, and thanks for watching.